I genuinely enjoy making sci-fi abstract looping animations. So for the first tutorial of 2024, I found that to be the perfect start for the year. Considering that technology is at a very fast paced development, I think this time we're going to go with something that depicts the fast paced motion of technology. With that, let's actually begin today's tutorial. We're going to use geometry nodes. So in our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then change this to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now we essentially need to create some sort of a curve and the type of curve that we want has to be something like this, or in fact, it could be something like this as well. Doesn't make a difference, but we need this sort of a curved shape. So in order to create this curved shape, we're going to use a Bezier segment. So let's press shift A and search for the Bezier segment and plug that into the group output. Now we actually see that the Bezier segment is curved like this. And that's because the start handle is kept at a value of minus 0.5 and 0.5 on the X and Y coordinates respectively. We can change that to zero on both of them to get a straight line. Once you have this straight line, you can extend it by changing this X from a value of minus one to maybe something like minus four and the end can have a value of maybe plus four so that it becomes much longer. Now, if you want this to go up on the z-axis, you can change this end handle as well to go up on the z-axis. Maybe let's start off with a value of 4 and now you see the curve is something like this. However, this causes a curve that's not exactly the type that we wanted. We want the curve to be a lot sharper towards this edge. So that's the type of curve that we want. In order to get this sort of curve, we can play around with the curve handles, which will allow us to play around with the shape of the curve. So we're going to use this end handle and just start playing around with this x and you can actually see say that this handle is going to take this x value. The handle is present somewhere over here and it has one handle here and one handle here. And by changing around this x value, we're just bringing this handle in, which changes the interpolation. So if we were to bring this more than four meters, it's going to go all the way around just like that. But let's keep this at four meters just like that. Now that we have this created, we can go ahead and just finalize the Z axis and all of that till you get the exact shape that you want. I think I'll keep the Z axis at five meters and that's good enough for one single curve. I need multiple curves. So to get multiple curves, we can first get a bunch of points on which we'll place this curve. So we'll do that by searching for a points node and plugging that into the group output. Now we have just one point in the center. We can increase the number of points by changing this count to maybe something like 50. Now there are 50 points all present right at the center, but obviously we don't want all of them to be present right there. We want to give them some amount of displacement on different axes. So we're going to use a set position node and we're going to simply plug that in after the points. And now we can control this offset with some noise texture. So instead of using a noise texture, I'm actually going to use a random value node so that I get access over all the three axes. But to get access to each of the axes, we're going to have to change this from float to vector. Now let's plug this value into the offset and you can see how they all move to one particular side. Let's go ahead and change this to have a min value of maybe minus 0.5 on all of the axes as well as a value of plus 0.5 on all of the axes. So that way they all come towards the center. Now I want these to be more spread out on the y axis. So I'll just go ahead and change this y value from minus 0.5 to maybe something like minus 2 and over here I'll make this plus 2 as well. So now they're more widely spread on the y axis. Now let's go ahead and instance this Bezier segment on each of these points. So let's press shift A, search for an instance on points node and plug that in after the set position. For the instance, let's use the Bezier segment and now we have all of the segments just shifted around here and there. You can always play around with these values as much as you want. Maybe a value of minus three and plus three will be better. And you can always play around with the seed as well if you don't like the distribution that you currently have. Once you have this set, the next step is to get some spheres to move along these curves. Now you can check out this video over here where we created a brain cell or communication abstract looping animation using a very similar technique as we're about to use over here, but we'll go through the exact technique once again right now. We're gonna have to search for a bunch of points first and we can do that using the same points node. So let's select it, press shift D and this time I want there to be like 500 points. So I'll change the count to 500. Now the position of these points have to be positioned along these curves. So we can do that by sampling each of the curves. So let's search for a sample curve node. And remember, this is going to have to take in curves as an input and not instances. So to convert them from instances to curves, we can search for a realize instances node. And now we have real geometry at 
the socket over here and we can plug that into the curves now we want this to change factor based on some particular curve let's go ahead and just take this position plug it into the position and let's plug this into the group output now you see you have all of the points going into the position of whichever curve has an index of zero as we play around with the factor you can see that we go up that specific curve and all 500 points are following that exact same position we don't want that we want a random factor for each of the points so let's search for a random value node plug that into the factor and now we have points present all along the curve then to make sure that we use all of the curves we can use this curve index node so let's search for another random value and this time we're gonna have to choose integer because the curve index is an integer but for the max value we have to know how many curves there are so the way we do that is by just shifting this over to the side pressing shift a searching for a domain size and simply plugging this instances into the input for the domain size and remember we want the instance count so we're going to change this from mesh to instances and then we can plug this into the max for the random value again we can play around with the seed to get something random and plug that into the curve index so now we have all these points on all the curves but i want them to be moving so to get them to move what we can do is again similar to what we did last time which is just searching for a math node and keeping it as add and just adding in a value. That way you can see we can go from the start all the way to the end. However, if they reach the end, I want them to loop back to the beginning. And to make something loop back, you use a math node set to modulo. So let's press shift D on this math node so that we get another math node. And this time we'll change it to floored modulo. We'll change the value to one so that it repeats every time the point reaches a value of one, which is the end of the curve. Then to make this continuously increase by itself, we're going to use a scene time node and we're going to connect this seconds value into the value over here. Now to see the actual speed at which this is going to play, we're going to go ahead and go to our output properties change the frame rate to 60 frames per second end frame maybe i'll keep it at 360 so that it's a six second long animation now the reason why i've done this is because right now if we were to play this animation and change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping you can see that this is moving a little too fast so i want this to loop maybe every six seconds so i'll press shift a and search for another math node and i'll change this from add to multiply and i'll multiply it by a smaller value or maybe i'll just change it to divide and now i know whatever i divide this by it's going to take that many seconds for this to loop so if i divide this by a value of three it's going to loop every three seconds so by having this at six seconds we know that it's going to complete two loops within one single set of the animation of course this might be too slow so you could change this down to a value of two and that way it's a lot faster and it's still going to loop because six seconds is divisible by two remember if the number of seconds is not divisible by the number here for example if we say five it's going to loop every five seconds but since we're doing this every six seconds it's no longer going to loop you can see that as we come to the end there's a small little jump that you can see right over there that jump is not something that we want so I'm going to keep this at two itself and that looks better. However, there's one more issue. It's all going up. I want these to be coming down. So in order to change that, all I'll do is change this to minus two and that's going to change the direction and it's all going to go from the top to the bottom. That looks great. Let's go ahead and complete this node tree by just joining in the original curves that we had over here with the points that we created. To join two geometries together, we're going to have to search for a join geometry node, plug that in right over here, and then take this output and plug that into the join geometry. And then we have to make sure that these curves that we just created can be seen even if we switch off overlays and in order to do that we have to convert them to real geometry so let's search for a curve to mesh node and plug that in right over here for the profile curve let's use a curve circle and then plug that into the curve to mesh now when we plug this in we're going to see that these circles are too large so let's reduce the radius to 0.1 or even lower let's go with 0 0.005 or 0 0.01 based on what thickness is suitable for your scene and i'm also going to reduce the resolution from 32 down to something like 3 because we don't actually need them to be that high resolution so now we need to actually convert these points as well to real geometry so let's just instance some icospheres on each of these points so let's search for an instance on points node and plug that in after the points over here now for the instance let's use an icosphere and the reason i'm using an icosphere is because we can easily make it rounder by using the subdivision socket right over here let's plug this mesh into the instance and let's reduce the radius down to maybe 0.1 or even lower let's go with 0.05 let's increase the number of subdivisions to something like three and that way they become really nice and round however if you actually go in close enough you can see each of these faces so in order to not see the faces let's search for a set shade smooth node plug that in right here and it's going to become nice and smooth now that we have all of that set we need to set the materials so let's press shift a search for a set material node plug that in right here and duplicate
duplicate it by pressing shift D and plugging it in right over here. So this set material is going to give us a material for all of the curves that we just created. And this set material is going to give us a material for the circles or spheres over here. So let's go to our material properties. You see there's already the default material. Let's press this plus button to add in a new material slot. New button will create a new material. And now let's select material 0, 0, 1 over here and material 0 over here. You can select whichever materials you want. Let's just rename this. So I'll call this as splines and maybe this one can be labeled as spheres. Now to mess around with the actual material, let's switch our viewport shading to render. Let's switch off the overlays. Let's go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Then let's go to our world properties, change this background all the way to black and let's select the default light and delete it. Then we'll go to our window over here, switch this from geometry node editor to the shader editor and then just select the default cube so that we get the materials from the default cube. First, we're going to be dealing with the spheres material. So you can just select it from the material properties over here. And then if you can't see the nodes, press period on your numpad to centralize them. If they still don't get centralized, tap A to select everything and then period to centralize them. Now I want these to be emissive. So I'll go down to the emission and I'll just change this color to a white for now. And I'll increase the strength to something like five. Now for the actual color, I want there to be two different colors. So I'll use a color ramp node as well as a random value so that each of them get a random selection from this color ramp. So I'll press shift A and search for an object info node and take the random output from here and plug that into the factor. Let's change this from RGB to HSV and then change this first socket from a black to maybe this sort of a blue and the second one can go from this white to maybe this purple or even a pink like this as well. Now if we plug this color into the color you should be able to see how each of them get a different color. Now to make this look less saturated because they are fairly bright we can switch over to the render properties tab Go all the way down to color management and change this from filmic to agx and that way they just look a lot brighter and the colors are handled much better by switching this to near and hsv we actually allowed it to get this bluish color if it was kept at rgb you'd see we just get a lot of white in the center which is not what i wanted i wanted it to go from the blue to dark blues purples and then eventually the pink so that's why we can keep it at HSV and even HSL will give us the same sort of distribution that we were looking for. Now, the next thing that we need to do is give some material to the splines. So let's go to our material properties and select splines from up here. The splines should just be very reflective. So let's increase the metallic all the way to one, make it completely bright. And maybe I'll reduce the roughness to 0.2. That way you can now see the splines and they look great. The next thing that we have to do is add in some background so that there's a lot more reflections. So let's press shift A and search for a mesh plane. Let's scale this plane up to maybe something like 10 and then just press G Z and bring it down just like that. Let's give it a new material, which is going to be very similar. Make the metallic all the way to one. The color can have a value all the way at once so that there's maximum reflections. And then the roughness I'll reduce down to maybe 0.15. That way there are really nice reflections and that looks great. However, I want this reflection to have some sort of a color to it as well. So what I'll do is I'll expand this specular over here and I'll just change this tint to a slightly bluish tint. And that way it looks like the floor has a bluish tint to it. Now to make things even more reflective, I'll just select this plane and duplicate it by pressing shift D and then I'll press R X 90 to make a side wall. I'll press G Y and move it over to the side just like that. Maybe I'll move it by three units. Then I'll press shift D X and move it by six units on not the X, but the Y. So I'll just tap Y and that way we should have it on the Y axis as well. And it moved towards this side. So let's just press G Y and move it by minus 12 units. And now we have a side wall over there as well. We need a back wall. So let's select this plane, press shift D to duplicate it and then R Y 90 to rotate on the Y axis by 90 degrees and then just press G X and move it back. And that looks great. Now there's a lot of reflections so we can place the camera. Let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. To see the camera, you can just switch on overlays and that's where the camera is. Let's rotate it on the Z axis by minus 90 degrees and that way it's now pointed in the right direction. You can press zero on your numpad to go into the camera view and then you can press G X and just drag it back till you're happy with the positioning of the camera. Now I want the camera to be present somewhere like this, but I want all of these particles to go above the camera. So to do that, I'll change the focal length down to something like 18 and that gives it a much more wide angle field of view and then I'll press GZ and I'll just bring it down to something like that. If you want to get the exact center, 
you can actually expand viewport display, increase pass power 2 all the way to 1, and then expand composition guides and switch on center. So now you can see exactly where the center is and you can align things accordingly. So I'll just move my camera down a bit more and that way we have the center right at the center. If this area is getting clipped, just scale it up or press GZ and bring it down by a little bit so that it is no longer clipped. Now that we have that set up, you can see that the animation is also working perfectly and that is exactly what we wanted. Now to add in the finishing touches, we're going to go over to our blender properties and we're going to switch on motion blur. apart from that we're also going to select our camera and go to the camera properties and just switch on depth of field then we can expand it and we can reduce the f-stop down to something like 1.8 and that will just blur out the edges quite a bit more then we can choose the focus distance by just playing around with this to get a nice amount of blur all around except for maybe some central region right here where it does not blur out that much so you can just fine tune this to your liking and you can always play around with the f-stop lower values will create more blurry images so keep that in mind and play around with this till you're happy with what you have once you think that everything looks great and you can make sure that it is looping by going to frame 360 and frame 0 and there should be no difference whatsoever so as long as the last frame and the first frame have no difference, it will be perfectly looping. So if that is the situation for you, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a fun tutorial for you and you learned something from it. I will be posting videos as often as I possibly can, hopefully once a day. And until the next video comes out, do check out other videos on my channel because I have over 300 videos that are just waiting to be discovered by you. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative. In case you want to buy the final animation, the 4K render, as well as the blend files, you can do so in my Patreon, which will be linked down below. Let me know if you think that's a good idea, and I will be posting every single one of them on Patreon as well.